something's changing. See his glory feels like heaven on earth. Something's moving, something's changing. See his glory feels like heaven on earth. Something's moving, something's changing. See his glory. Your 
And in order for us to worship God, we can only truly worship God in the spirit. Amen? Is this the word? Is this Janine or is this the word? This is the word of God. It says, he is seeking such to worship him. He is looking for true worship in the house of God, in the presence of God. Your carnal man cannot worship God. Your flesh cannot worship God. God can only be worshipped in the spirit. He can only be worshipped worship in the spirit. Saints, worship is a sacrifice. It has always been a sacrifice. From the beginning, if you look at the Old Testament, worship and sacrifice has always been hand in hand. Always been together. Anytime you look in the Old Testament, whenever there was a sacrificial sacrifice made unto God, that was an act of worship unto God. Hear me, saints. Hear me by the Spirit of God. Anytime there was a sacrificial worship, anytime there was a sacrifice made, it was a worship. In Genesis chapter 5, I believe in 22, Abraham, when he took Isaac, the Bible says that he said to his servant, I am going up to worship. He knew in his heart that he was going to take his son and use him as a sac sacrifice unto God. But to him, that was an act of worship. It was a sacrifice. It was, a, it was an act of worship. There are different types of worship. You can worship God and then there's true worship. Cain and Abel, they made sacrifices. Two different sacrifices, which was an act of worship. One was acceptable and one was not acceptable. So that tells me there's acceptable worship and there's non-acceptable worship. There's worship that God is going to accept and then there's worship that he is not going to accept. Amen. God is a spirit and they that will worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. your bodies as a what? As a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. Here he says God is looking he is seeking for true worshipers. I heard it like this when we pray we are seeking the face of God. But when we worship, God is seeking us. Hear me. When we pray, we are seeking the face of God. But when we worship, God is seeking. He's looking. You want to get God's attention? Get into true worship, saints. True worship. Where your lifestyle, your body become that living sacrifice unto God. In the Old Testament, when they brought that living sacrifice, that lamb, that bull, that goat, they got the purest. It had to be without blemish. It had to, it could not be tainted. They got the best, the fattest, and they brought it before God. Hear me. This was their worship unto God. God says, present your bodies as a living holy holy to be, to, be, to be separate to be sanctified to be set unto God which is our reasonable service we can't come into the presence of God any kind of way we must our worship must must be in the spirit it must must be pure for God is seeking such true worshipers in the house of God. He's looking for true worshipers. Men and women, boys and girls. The Bible says in spirit and in truth. That's the key word. Spirit and truth. What is truth? Truth in the inward part. 
Pastor Alfred and Auntie Tago, you are welcome to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Where's my Oasis family? Come on. Come on now. This is the house of God. This is God's house. This is Sunday morning worship service. Amen. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Or is it just me? Are you excited? Come on, I thought you excited. Smile. You guys are looking beautiful. I don't see smile. Come on, smile. Hallelujah. Everyone's going to be so gorgeous this morning. We thank God for your lives. We thank God that you are here with us this morning. I just have a few announcements. I'm going to be real quick. Um, we have our crossover youth service is going to be tonight. So excited. We have crossover youth service once a month. It should actually be more than once a month. Brother Smith, just throwing that out there. Um, my daughter, she's a part of the uh, crossover youth, and she's saying that we should have crossover youth more than once a month. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> crossover youth is this evening from um, starts at 6:30 p.m. for all ages between well for ages between 13 and 18, but all are welcome to come out and be a part of the crossover youth service. Amen? Amen. So if you have teenagers. Um, children that you want to be a part of the youth service, please come out tonight. Bring the children back out tonight. If you want to stay and just be an encouragement and a blessing to the Smith family, brother and sister Smith, um, head the cross of the youth. They're amazing, amazing. They believe in the lives of our children. Um, they are amazing with the children. Amen. So let's come out and let's support them. Um, be a part of what God is doing here in our youth. Amen. We have our Miracle and Healing and Breakthrough service that's going to be Sunday, August the 6th at 6.30 p.m. Please, please, I believe that's, is that next week Sunday? That's next week Sunday. Please invite a friend, uh, a Frank. We all know what that is. So please invite someone out next week. It's always a blessing. Our Miracle and Healing services are always a blessing. Amen? So please invite someone um, next week Sunday at 6.30 p.m. We also have... Um, t-shirts and books at the um, in the foyer area. Our t-shirts and books are on sale. Um, they're $10 each. We also have special CDs um, on sale. We have Divine Rest for $30 and Abundant Life Series and Walking in Divine Favor um, Series is $20. Please, these are impacting messages that have been such a blessing to us and I believe the body of Christ. Please, if you, if you have uh, bought some before, buy one for a friend, a family member, somebody that you feel that will be a blessing to, in their lives. Amen? Amen? We're also still doing our one-on-one -on -one with Pastor Continues. Please see Sister Gautil after service to sign up for um, Meet Your Pastor one-on-one. -on -one. It's an opportunity for a pastor to get to meet us, us, our pastor, and for him to kind of figure out where you, what part of the ministry that you want to be a part of, and just to get to know you. Amen? So please, it's very important. If you have not signed up as yet, please um, see Sister Cotil after the service and sign up for one-on-one um, -on -one with Pastor. We have our regular services that are Sunday morning, starting at 10.30 a.m. We have our Wednesday Bible study. Please, please, I can't stress how important it is to be a part of that at 7 o'clock p.m. every Wednesdays. And then we have an hour of prayer, uh, more than an hour, but... Fridays is our prayer service time at 7 o'clock p.m. If you are a member of Oasis of Love, please be a part of those service times. Amen. Invite a friend, invite a co-worker, family member, someone to come out and be a part of that. Amen? Amen. Also, um, we have two Sundays ago, we had our church picnic. And uh, we have some items in the back of our um, sanctuary, not the sanctuary, in our um, reception area. If you brought a tent or a chair, we have a bunch of them in the back. If you want to claim those, please go in the back there and do so. Uh, we have, we, we can keep them, we don't mind. Um, for next year, that's not a problem. But if you um, have at home a chair missing or a tent, please, you can go back in the reception area by the door and there's a whole stack of them. You can find yours there if you left them, okay? Amen. 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 So without further ado, I would like for you to stand to your feet. And I would like 
to introduce our shepherd, our apostle, the man of God who God has blessed us with, an incredible and powerful word on the inside of him. Let's put our hands together for none other than our apostle, Alfred Taylor. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. You can do that, that, and that. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. My Lord, I might need you here for a minute. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated for just a few seconds. You might be getting back up. Hallelujah. Man, put your hands together for uh, Minister Janine. What is that? Wasn't that a word? Amen. I think we can, we can leave and go home and say that we came to church and we had a good time. Hallelujah. Worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth. Thank you, Janine. That was a good uh, a breakdown. Um, even got a message out of that. So uh, you, you will be hearing, you know, hallelujah. Let, let me just tease, tease with you. It's good to see you, Angie. Looking beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might be hearing a message soon. Uh, so tell somebody, say, protect your king. All right, that's, that's it. We will talk about that later on. Amen. Amen. We want to see those of you who uh, stood up. Uh, we didn't get to uh, let you introduce yourself. Uh, if today is your very first time joining us on a Sunday morning or in Oasis, or maybe in a very long time, some of us may have forgotten your, your name, and so we want to still remember your name. Please stand on your feet and let us welcome you for the first time or for the first time in a long time. Please stand on your, on your feet again for just a second. Just tell us your name and, um, you know, who, who, who God used to bring you to us. Amen. mistakes we are not a uh, we are definitely not a perfect church the day you find a perfect church don't go there I'm just telling you just stay away from the perfect church before because the moment you step there it's gonna stop being a perfect church how many of you believe what I'm talking about amen and so uh, we are being perfected amen. by the God as we come and hear and witness what God is doing amen amen and so we, we thank God for what he is doing in our midst and I believe that God has a word for us. God has something he wants to do. Let me just read a scripture for you. I uh, definitely hope I'm not going to uh, spend time there. I uh, was here with Pastor Edwin uh, last night just you know, uh, praying. But uh, this is a very powerful word. And I believe that it is for you to meditate on and believe that this is what God is doing. Uh, somebody say, this is the house of hope. It's a house of deliverance. Hallelujah. And we have already begun, you know, sense and see some things happening today. Hallelujah. It says in Zechariah chapter 9, just want to uh, point this out to you and um, to let you know this is, this is, this is what it's all about. Uh, we're going places. And uh, so strap, your, strap yourself 
uh, God is taking us places and like uh, Sir Janine said, definitely don't miss Wednesdays. Um, we were not here, uh, just came back from vacation, but we had wonderful testimony of uh, Pastor Edwin did an awesome job last Wednesday, talking about the soul. Amen. But uh, we're still on that series, Spirit, uh, Spirit, Soul, and Body. You don't want to miss it. Identifying who the true you is. When you know who you are, you know what you have and what you can do. It, you know, the devil doesn't want you to know who you are. Tell me someone and say, the devil doesn't want you to know who you are. Because the day you discover who you are, he ceases to dominate you. So it is in your own interest to know who you are. Amen. Amen. Look at Zechariah chapter 9, and then we're going to get ready for our offering, and we'll get into the word. This is just a scripture I want to throw at you. Chapter 9, verse 9. Let's start from verse 9. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word. Ah, thank you for your word. Spirit of God, thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Wonderful worship this morning. Yes. Bless you, God. Wonderful worship. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Oasis. Amen. See that? See, thank you, whoever that was. See, see, that was not a suggestion, that is a command. So I'm going to read it again. And listen, we are doers of the word. Are we doers of the word? All right, so you're going to do what the word says, right? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Oasis. There you go. Rejoice. Shout, O oh daughter of Columbus. Oh, come on. Shout. And he says, Behold. Someone say, Behold. Who is coming? Oh, come on. Who is coming? So, the reason why you can rejoice, the reason why you can shout, is because somebody is coming. Hallelujah. He is your king. Hallelujah. He is who? Your king. And kings come to conquer territories. That means that any territory that the devil has come that belong to him that is yours, don't worry about it. Just say the king is coming. He said the king coming unto who? Oh, come on. He's coming where? To me. He's coming to Oasis. The king coming unto thee. He is just. And having what? He's having salvation. What is salvation? Salvation means healing, deliverance, wholeness, everything that you can think of that is in a package of the cross. See, many of us think that salvation is just when I came to Jesus, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. That is just the beginning. Are you hearing me, somebody? Don't get stuck in, uh, in, uh, at the cross. Come on, after the cross, come on, move a little bit. There is a resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he rose, you rose with him. But don't stay even at the resurrection. There is an ascension. Hallelujah. Where he is seated, there you are also seated. Don't, don't say that only. After that, there was Pentecost. Where power belongs to you. Are you hearing me? Everything is in progress. Some of us started at the cross and we are still at the cross, at the cross. Where are first? Well, thank God you first saw the light. What are you doing with the light since you saw the light? Yeah. After you saw the light, Bible says, he who was in the light, as he is in the light, after you saw the light, now you have to walk in the light. Amen. Oh, I got to stop. I said I won't preach on this one. <laughs> but you see, you can preach on salvation for, you know, you will never stop. Someone say, I have salvation. Because he has salvation. See, he says, rejoice, shout, be happy. Why? Your king is coming to you. He has he is just and he has salvation. He is lonely and riding upon an ass. You know, he fulfilled that, you know, uh, on the day, uh, what was it called? Palm Sunday, we talk about it. Upon the call, the, the fall of an ass, keep going. And he says, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, the chariot, the, the invading army. He says that, and the horse from Jerusalem, the invading army that has been trying to uh, harass you. He said, I will cut them off. Somebody say, he will cut them off. And the battle bow shall be cut off. Aren't you tired of fighting? Oh God, let me keep going. I, I, I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I, I'm tired of being tired. I, 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 the devil is a lie. I'm getting my stuff. Are you hearing me, somebody? He says, and he shall do what? He shall speak peace unto the heathen. 
He is speaking peace. What is peace? Shalom. My God. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. This is what your king is bringing to you. And his dominion shall be from sea to shining sea. And from the river even to the ends of the earth. Jesus is reigning. Oh, but listen to this right now. As for thee, he's talking about Jesus now. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant. How many of you believe in the blood covenant? Hallelujah. I almost asked us to take communion today, but maybe we will do it next week. Uh, listen, there is a revelation about the blood. Uh, the blood reveals. Uh, he says this, he's doing this uh, by the blood of his covenant. Uh, he says, I have sent forth your prisoners out of the pit where it is no water. By the blood covenant, God says, uh, every prisoner is going to be set free. Uh, I don't know what you have been a prisoner of, uh, but you are about to be set free uh, because of the blood. Somebody say the blood. He says, your, your prisoners are going to be set free from the pit where there was no water. And then he says to us, uh, Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Some of us have been imprisoned by hope. What does that mean? You are hope of something that it seems like you can never get there. You are imprisoned in your own hope. But Jesus says, he is about to deliver you. He says, run to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even tomorrow, even next week, when is your salvation? When is your healing? When is your deliverance? He says, you go to the stronghold. You prisoner of hope. I feel the Holy Ghost. Even today, do I declare that I will render double. Oh, somebody, you are not excited. Whatever the devil did, God says, I'm about to give you double. When? Today. You are a prisoner of hope. When are you going to be free? Today. Hallelujah. We prayed here and last night and I believe it. I wanted to stand on your feet for a few seconds and I wanted to rejoice because you are being set free. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I came here today with the Holy Ghost and anointed. I break every prison door. I deliver every captive. I declare that you are free. To rejoice and act as if you are free, for he who the sun sets free is free indeed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach good tidings. And it has freedom, you prisoners of hope, be set free in your mind, be set free in your thoughts, be set free in your body, be set free in your soul. We are free in our body. We are free in our mind. 
We are free in the name of Jesus. We are free in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that stand in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and do not no longer be entangled. Any entanglement today by apostolic authority and by prophetic authors, every entanglement, I lose you. I declare be free. I declare woman thou art loose. I declare man thou art loose from every addiction, from every entanglement, from every spirit of depression, from every spirit of oppression, from every spirit of suppression. I lose you from suppressive spirits, from suppression, from your emotional disturbance. In the name of Jesus, be loose. Be loose. Be loose. Angels. Angels, move now. Minister, freedom. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, just receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it. In the name of Jesus, just flow, flow. Just flow, receive it. In the name of Jesus, any entanglement. Oh, my goodness. Lord, we will preach you any entanglement. Hallelujah. I bind every serpent of the spirit. I bind any python like spirit. I bind any blood sucking spirit. I bind any mental agitation spirit. Any mind altering spirit. I bind you today. I command you to lose your whole life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, just begin to move your feet a little bit. Come on, begin to move your feet. Every chain, every chain, every chain. Begin to just move a little bit. Just begin to move your feet. Come on, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I, mean, I don't know about you. I don't know if you have watched this movie. Happy feet, come on. Get happy with your feet right now. Come on, you can help me. Your feet is no God loose. You enter into your new place. You enter into your new level. You are loose, you are free. Come on, you are free. Come on, you are free. Every Hittite spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus, every spirit of fear, every spirit of discouragement, every spirit of intimidation, I bind you to pay. I command you to lose. You love the Catholic. Ah,
worship the Lord. There is freedom in this place. Because it is free. 
Because it is free. Come on, because say, say, say deliverance is free. It, it is free to be free. I like that. Oh, come on, give somebody a high five and tell them it is free to be free. It is good to be free. The question I have for you is what are you going to do with this newfound freedom? Amen. What are you going to do with this new freedom? What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? What are you? You are free. You are free to start that business. You, you are free. You, you are free. And sometimes the most dangerous thing is a free person. Don't go back. Many, many years ago when the Emancipation Proclamation was made, I believe two or three things happened. There were people who heard the proclamation and took advantage of it and went free. There were others who were comfortable being slaves. They heard the proclamation but they said, you know what? I think my life is okay where I am. But sad to say that there were others who for years were still in slavery because they didn't know that they were already free. As for here, we will let you know you are free. That you can take advantage of that freedom. Hallelujah. Whatever he freed you from. Let's go of that thing around. Run! Forest, run! See the white laughter. Who was Forest Jump before? Come on, somebody say, Forest, run! Forest, run! Forest, run! Come on, Forest Jump! Run! How as you can! Run! To the strong girl of freedom.
Hallelujah. Tell those who didn't make it a mess. But we pray for them anyhow. Amen. Amen. Dana, how are you? You're doing good? It's loud? Well, welcome to church. <laughs> Amen. Come on, get your, get your seed in your hand. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, we the prisoners of hope. We run to the stronghold. We thank you for the blood covenant. The blood that has saved us, redeemed us, justified us, purged us, cleansed us, sanctified us. Yes, thank you for the blood that is speaking better things on our behalf. The blood that has spoken of God good and better things than the blood of evil, than the blood of goats and bulls, the blood of Jesus. We have been bought with the precious blood of the Lamb, made free, sanctified, redeemed, hallelujah, delivered. We thank you for the blood. Blood covenant. And so, Father, as we come in obedience, Hallelujah. Come on, get your tithe, your offering. And this presence of God in the house. Again, your tithe is 10%. Don't cheat yourself. Hallelujah. Do what God says do, and he will do what he says he will do. Father, in the name of Jesus. So if you are a tither here, you are ready with your seat. Just stand on your feet. Just those who are bringing your tithe this morning. Hallelujah. It's okay, just, you know. Hallelujah. Maybe you want to sit in the back, that's okay. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Okay. Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, just lift those times. This is your covenant connection with God. He says, if you bring in the time, if that's a powerful word. If you bring the tithes into my storehouse, he says, I will open the windows of heaven. I will pour you out a blessing. I will repeat the devourer for your sakes. As I stand in the stead of the high priest Jesus, as I receive your tithes, I declare that the devourer is rebuked for you on your behalf. The heavens are open. On your behalf. Supply is your portion. Lack is not your portion. Abundance is your portion. Increase is your portion. In the name of Jesus. You are blessed. In Jesus name. Somebody said amen. amen. Everybody else please stand on your feet. With your offering. Everybody keeps offering. Maybe today wasn't a day that you know. You receive your paycheck or however you do it so you don't have the time. But everybody does something with offering. Offering as you give, you know, according to what uh, you, you, you know the Lord has blessed you with. It's, it, you know, it's up to you. And so we just bless God. And say this after me. Say, Father, I thank you for wealth and riches are in my house. Because I am faithful to do with what you give me to do. Thank you, Father. For this offering, you said if I give, it shall be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men, I say men, shall pour into my bosom. I call forth the men that you have called forth to find me where I am. I declare that even ravens are able to bring my supply to me. I declare checks in the mail. I declare increase all around me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I will bear fruit in my season. For I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. In the name of Jesus, everything I do prospers. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, come on somebody say amen. Amen. All right, Marlon, let's go. Come on, rejoice in your freedom as you bring your offering. It is a time of rejoicing. Come on, let's go. Credit card, if you want to give by credit card, debit card, 
please come this way and see Sister Janine. She's going to help you in Jesus' name. Come on, come on. I want to see somebody rejoicing because this is Emancipation Sunday. Remember, this is your day of liberty. Hey! Right now, as you minister to the needs of the people, 
We thank you, Lord, that at the end of the day, we will be careful to give you the glory and the honor for all that is said and done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say amen. amen. All right, turn your Bibles real quick with me to the book of Deuteronomy. Again, that's always a mouthful, but Deuteronomy chapter number seven. All right, so go with me. I think we can use the ESV just to make it a little more simpler. Deuteronomy chapter 7, and then we are going to go to Joshua. Joshua chapter 3. Understand? Hallelujah. Let's see how far the Lord will. The Lord will take us, or time will permit us to declare this word. If you have the, a couple of weeks ago, um, I sort of started what I call a kind of a new series, but it is a pickup from our earlier discussion, talking about the rest of God, talking about from living our twilight zone into our rest. How many of you remember that we have a whole CD series on that part there called Divine Rest? Talking about the way the Bible says in, uh, I believe, Deuteronomy chapter 6, I believe verse 24, he says, he brought us out so that he will bring us in. But there's always an in-between point between the coming out and the bringing in. And we just say that that in-between, the timeline in that in-between point mostly depends on you and not on God. Amen. He brought you out of sickness, but some people haven't yet entered into divine health. But that is his promise. That is his promise. That is your promise now. How many of you believe you say amen? amen. For the children of for the children of Israel, which represents a model for us. Amen. They were brought out of Egypt with the full intention that God will send all of them to their promised land. But how many of you know that your Bible says that for most of them, and God was not pleased? And what did we say about that? Why wasn't God pleased? Huh? Because of what? Unbelief that leads to disobedience. Amen? You find that in First Corinthians chapter 10, we read that. He said for, you know, most of them, God was not pleased. And how, as Christians today, it, 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 you know, it was supposed to be all along. You know, they chose to go by the law. God wanted them to live by faith. Okay? And so when he says, for most of them, God wasn't pleased, what does Bible say? What is the only way you can please God? By what? Faith. Amen? For Bible says, without faith, it is what? Impossible. Impossible to please God. We also learn from Hebrews chapter 4, where it outlines a similar uh, discussion. Um, that they did not enter because of unbelief, because of disobedience. See, disobedience always is as a result of unbelief. If you truly believe that God is, you will obey Him. So anytime uh, uh, disobedience is rampant, know that unbelief is, has to be dealt with. For He said that he who comes to God must what? Must what? First believe that he what? He is. he is what? He is God. He is judge. He is whatever. He said, I am that I am. And so if you believe that God is, therefore then you know that you are accountable to him, then you will know how to act. Amen? Amen. But if, if, you see, we can stop there. You know, that, that seems to be the frightful part. It shouldn't be a frightful part. But I like the second part, which we don't preach enough of. He didn't, only, he didn't say, uh, uh, he who comes to God must let's first believe that he is. He added something. And also, what else that you have to believe? That he is a Man, come on, someone say, my God is a rewarder. My God is a rewarder. Nothing I do for him is in vain. He said, it has hope here in this life and the life to come. When you have that understanding, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 that you will be steadfast and what? Unmovable. Always. Someone say always. Always, always abounding in the good work of the Lord. Why? Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Isn't God good? And so he says that he who comes to God must first believe that he is, number one, and he is a reward of those that what? No, that's not what my Bible says. It says those who casually seek him. 
those who, you know, when they feel like it, you know, they pray when they feel like it. You know, I don't feel like going to church. God understands. He knew I work all day yesterday. Yeah. See, but you won't say that about your boss. You won't sleep all day and say, he go to work. My boss understands. And he will still pay me. You know, he understands. I mean, he understands how tough it is in this economy, the traffic and all that. You know, their boss understands. How many of you, your boss understands when you don't show up to work and, you know, they are cool with it? <laughs> See, we give more respect to our bosses than we give to the boss of all bosses. Because we don't believe that he truly rewards. See, if you truly believe that God will reward you, like you believe that your boss will reward you if you show up for 40 hours, 10 hours, uh, an hour, you are looking forward for that $800 in two weeks that you can't wait to get to work. Right? How many of you, your boss gives you the pay before you work? Anybody here? I would like to work for your boss. I know some people, you know, they give you advance or something. But how many of you know all of us here, if you work, you have to put in the work before the pay. Therefore, you know that you are living by faith, right? You know that faith? Right? You work for two weeks, believe that the man will be a man of his work. What if at the end of the two weeks he came and said, na 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 April Fool, you just wait, I don't have money for you. Oh, you'll be crying for justice. Uh, are you here with me, Samba? See, you have faith in your employer that if you sow time, he will reward you. So you have faith that your boss is and is a rewarder. Of your hard work. Am I talking Bible? But my question is, do you believe the same about God? Do you believe that God is and He's a rewarder of those who what? Diligently. That means rain or shine. Feeling or no feeling. I put in the work. Not like something there's works and there's work. There is the work of faith. Amen. Amen. But you see, he is not like your boss. Mm. This God, when he says, I reward you. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, this kind God. I never see your kind God. This kind God. Forever be your name or something. You see, he's a reward. Someone say he's a reward. Come on, say it, it, it is worth serving God. You give him your all. He has already given you. The Bible says that if he did not withhold his only begotten son, the most precious jewel of all, he gave him freely for you. He said, How much more? If God already gave you the Rolls Royce, what about the little bicycle you're asking? For? Jesus was the Rolls Royce. He already gave that to you. You think that he won't give you a bicycle? Because whatever else you're asking from God is not more valuable than the one He already gave you. See, when you don't see it that way, it is what happens that big bridge that you are jaded. See, we take Christ for granted, we've taken Jesus for granted, we think that He owed us something, He didn't owe you nothing, He gave you His best already. What you are looking for, that car cannot be compared to Jesus. That house cannot be compared to Jesus. That wife, that husband, whatever, it cannot. If you already gave you Jesus, check this out. He, he doesn't have a problem giving you. He doesn't mind giving you all the other stuff freely to enjoy. But anyway, let me get back to, to this. But, but listen, it's time to put Christ back at the center. I, I felt that this morning. It is time to put Christ back at the center. It's time to truly say this without being, uh, should I say, religious or cliche or whatever. It's truly time to be able to boldly say that God, if you never bless me with another blessing, thank you for Jesus. Hallelujah. Because if Jesus is not enough, nothing will become enough. Because anything else he gives you that you think is the one thing that you are looking for, after that there will be another thing. Are you listening to me, somebody? 
and you will live an unfulfilled life if you are moving from a living God from one blessing to another blessing to make it fulfilled, it there will be never an end. You thought, oh, you know, God, if you give me a husband, I don't need anything else. Trust me, after the husband comes, now you are looking for that five-bedroom house. I this is me, you are going to move from one to another, and it's always going to be what God hasn't done for you rather than what He has already done for you. I want to lay off of what he has already done. Are you listening to me? That is fulfillment. Somebody said amen. So anyway, but we are on, our, uh, we are on a journey. Somebody said we are on a journey. So the children of Israel failed to enter their promised land. Now we also said that the promised land, Canaan, the land flowing with milk and honey, Canaan in our dispensation is not heaven. Somebody say amen. You know, somebody said, when I get to heaven or when I get to Canaan, we sing songs. Canaan is not heaven. Canaan is earthly stuff. Because we also established, as we are going to read very soon, in order for them to possess their promise land, to possess Canaan, they had to fight some giants. How many of you think that when you go to heaven, you have to fight some giant before you enter into heaven? There are no giants in heaven. All the giants you are ever going to face, they are well. Amen? So Canaan is not synonymous of heaven. They had a promised land. You have a land of what? Promises. That God wants you to what? Attain and possess. Somebody say amen. amen. And so they got out of Egypt, out of sin, out of the tyrannical uh, 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 slavery of Pharaoh who represents Satan. They came out of that. His intention was that for them to enter into the promised land flowing with milk and honey to live in houses that they did not build, to live in you know, drink from wells they did not dig, to eat fruits that were giant enough for two people to carry. It was a good land. Somebody says a good land. In actual fact, that journey was supposed to take them maybe about 11 days according to many estimates, but it ended up taking them how many, how many years? 40 years, not by God's estimation, but by their own choice. Why? Because they said, we saw ourselves as grasshoppers, and the people saw us as grasshoppers. God said, well, whatever you say you shall have, grasshoppers can't live in giant mansions. Yes. What is good for grasshoppers is for people to step on them. And so you are going to be stepped on in this wilderness until you perish. But the children who will come out of you, they will possess the land. Somebody said amen. And so that, we, that is what we call our twilight zone. And we said that, you see, in order to possess your land, you are going to face two types of enemies. Somebody said two types. You are going to have to deal with internal battles. You are going to have to deal with external fights. The sad thing is that the children of Israel, they, they were defeated by their own internal battle. They didn't even get to fight the giants. Amen. That internal battle with the disguise was in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 idolatry, fornication, immorality, memory, all those things, it was self-inflicted stuff. Some of us, the reason why we are not enjoying what God has already paid for you to enjoy is not because the devil is doing anything, it is your own self that is killing you. You are killing yourself softly. You want to see your greatest enemy look in the mirror. Amen? Stop blaming the devil so much, just do something about your mind. Oh, I said I'm out for. Uh, am I okay so far? Uh, are, we, are we okay? Somebody said, I got to deal with me first. I got to get me out of the way first. Are you listening to me, somebody? Before you enter that battle, and I pray that some of us, if not all of us, have gotten over ourselves. You need to get over yourself. Get over that offense. Get over that pride. Get over that thin little thing. You know, some people, you know, if it, uh, you know if, if, if it hits you, just say, ouch. I'm not meaning to offend anybody. Just say, ouch, and move on. Amen? Don't be, you know, inconsistent. Just, just, just stay with the word. Amen? But now we are talking about the real giants that they will have to face. And the Bible says there were seven of them. So now let's read the scripture and see where we will go from here. Last two weeks we dealt with one of the enemies. But let's just read the scripture now. Are we okay so far? In verse number one it says, When the Lord your God, what, what, what is he going to do? He said, When the Lord your God brings you, Hallelujah, come on, put your name there. When the Lord your God brings Alfred into the land that I am entering. See, these are facts. He's declaring things. 
I hope you are here with me, please. We don't want just to go to church and say that we're going to church. You got to get something out of this. He didn't say that you may possess it or you may enter it. He is a statement. He says that I am bringing you into that land. You are going to enter into that land. You are going to take possession of that land. Hallelujah. I don't know what your land is, but get ready to possess it. Yeah. This year is not over yet. It is our year of divine rest. Somebody say amen. amen. He said that you may take possession of it and clear us away. Who is going to do the clearing? No, God will help you. You are going to fight, fight, but he clears the way for you. He said he will clear our way many nations. How many nations? Many nations before you. Okay, let's go. The Hittites, the Gegesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I like to add this one, night, the Parasites. <laughs> all the ites. All the ites you are facing. The parasites are sitting on your land. There are spotters on your land. God has given you healing. Take it by force. God has given you prosperity. Take it what? By force. You have been healed by the cross of Jesus. He said seven nations more numerous and mightier than yourselves. We said this two weeks ago. Don't try to fight the devil by yourself or in yourself or in your flesh. The Bible says that by the flesh and of flesh no man shall what prevail. Your Bible says it is not by what might nor by power. It is by the spirit of God that this mountain shall be moved. Some of you have been trying to move your mountain and you say oh I've been trying. Stop trying and let God move that mountain for you. Just have faith in God. For I hear the Bible says uh, Jesus said it this way in Mark chapter 11. Uh, how, that, how do you move a mountain? He says have faith in God. For truly I say unto you if you shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the see and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall, hallelujah, believe that whatsoever things you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever things you say. Somebody said, I can have what I say. But it's not just what I say, it's what I say in faith. Faith-filled words is what move mountains. Oh, somebody write that down. Faith-filled words moves mountains. So he said, I will move them. He said, these enemies, they are stronger than you. They are mightier than you. We said this before. The devil is a spirit. Spirits are more powerful than flesh. Principalities and powers. Though they have been defeated by Jesus, they still have schemes and they still have ways to, to lure you into their, into their diabolical schemes. The devil knows you, hallelujah, way longer than you really know yourself. He knows with buttons to push and therefore you have to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh any man that is in the flesh is uh, is like is like is like pizza for the devil you can't fight him in the flesh the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not what they are not flesh they are not AK 47 sometimes i wish they were but it is not well, i guess you have to do what the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly. They are not carnal, but they are what? Mighty through God to deal with mighty devils. Mighty through God. What are some of the weapons? The blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The word of God. The soul of the spirit. The shield of faith. Oh, is somebody here with me? You got to know your weapons. So you can defeat your enemies. Stop walking by the flesh and get into the spirit. The weapons of our mouth are not cut down. They are mighty through God to the pulling out of strongholds, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing it to captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Somebody said amen. He said the enemies are more numerous than you. You got to trust them. Let's go to the next one. No? That's not in the Bible. I know that for sure. Welcome to Oasis. Okay, there we go. And when did he say if? Please check this out. Did he say if? Is and when the Lord, somebody say it's only a matter of time. So I hope somebody's getting something. Somebody say what I'm going through is only a matter of time. It is a when, not an if. If you stay faithful to the word, 
It's only a matter of time. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, hallelujah, that you are need of patience. That after you have suffered a what? A little while, you will obtain the promise. Your suffering may have been for a little while, but it is going to come to an end. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Just wake up in the morning. Don't die in the night. Don't perish in the night. Hallelujah. You may be in your night season right now. But just hold on. Because morning is coming. Your dawning of the day is coming. Just hold on to your faith. Your Bible says, Hallelujah. Do not give up on your confession of hope. Because you shall reap if you fail to not. Somebody say, I refuse to he says, and when, and when, and when, and when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you defeat them, then you must devote them to complete destruction. You shall make no what covenant with them and show no mercy to them. Remember what we said two weeks ago? Show no mercy to the devil because he ain't showing mercy to you. Some of you are cuddling with the devil. You are sleeping with the enemy. Are you listening to me, somebody? He ain't having no mercy on you. You better not have mercy on him. You better destroy what God says destroy. Otherwise, what you don't destroy will destroy you one day. The enemy you don't kill today will rise up and kill you tomorrow or your, your descendants. Hear me and hear me well. Somebody said it's time to fight. He says you shall not intermarry with them and go. Now let's go to John, Joshua chapter 3 real quick. Are you still here with me? Joshua chapter 3, real quick. Verse 10. Verse 10. And then we'll, we'll break some things down before we go. And Joshua said, Here is how you shall know. Here is how you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will, without fail, Drive out from you, from before you, the what? The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gagashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites, and the Parasites. Are you listening to me? See, I was telling this to a, a brother yesterday. It's time for us to all endeavor to have a history in God. If not for your own sake, for the sake of your children. Hallelujah. Can your children rise up one day and say, The God of my father, Alfred. Amen. How are they going to be able to say that? Because of what they saw God do in your generation. Amen. I hate religion. If you are coming here because of religion, stop coming. I, I, I refuse for this place to be just a religious exercise. I want to see God move. He said, this is how you shall know that God is amongst you. That he drives out these people. That means that a time has to come when you stop dealing with some gay yeah. Are you listening to me, somebody? A time has to come when you have stopped dealing with some gay times because God has delivered you. Yes. Not because you said it. Paul put it this way. The, the, the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in what? Power. Is in demonstration. Church, where is the power of God? We have so many theological cemeteries. Well, seminaries. Some people go there on fire and they come back dead. They have been brainwashed with all stuff. Where is the power? Stop talking to me about, you know, just, you know, what about? Give me something. Give me some. I'm going through some pain. God heal me. I'm going through some stuff. Can God do this for me? Folks, it is time to have a history. Someone said it's time for me to have a history in God. He said, this is how you shall know. Not that God said it. He said, this is how you shall know that God is among you. Oasis, I declare that you will see things in this church. It's already happening. It's just, it's just some miracles. If, if, I, if I tell you, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not in fullness yet. So we'll see. But things are happening. Somebody said things are happening. That I know that God is an alarmist. Not because they are saying it, but because it is happening. But is it happening in your home? Is it happening in your marriage? Is it happening around you? Can your children wake up and say, 
man, when my mother prays, something happens. When my father prays, something happens. Can your children come to the place where they are trying to, you know, go to the world, but they know that they know that they know that something is in my mother when she prays. You got to give them something to live for. You got to give them something that tells them that if I can serve the same God that my mother said, I will have the same results that they had. If I never leave a mansion for my children, I will. If I never leave whatever you think, earthly, you know, inheritance or whatever, may it never be said that you never left a legacy of faith for them. Because if you leave a legacy of faith for them, they can use that faith to get anything else that they need. That is what Paul told Timothy. He said, Timothy, wake up. Stir some things up. Listen, I know you may not have a Rolls Royce, you may not have a Cadillac, you may not have all those things, but one thing I know is that you can fit inside this belly of yours. Because I can tell it was passed down from your mother, your grandmother, Lewis, to your mother, Eunice, and I know that that same faith is in you. You better stir it up. You have a legacy of faith. People of God, we got to have a legacy of faith. You got to leave something for them. James, you know, uh, Sham is going to grow up and he's going to hear how he had God healed. Uh, hallelujah. His father on a deathbed when doctors gave up on him. But it's not just a past tense. What is happening to, to us now? He's going to get up and hear about how God healed his mama of what? Cancer. Are you here with me, somebody? We have to what? Uh, pursue that thing. The Bible says in the book of Jude, it's a content for the faith. Somebody say content for the faith. And I'm going to challenge us. I'm going to pull us along. And I need you to pray for me. Don't let me settle. I want God, folks. I want God. I want the presence. I want some tangibility. I want to know that I know. I don't just want to read it in the storybook. I don't want to read it in the history of revivalism. I want to have a revival in my day. I want to have a revival in my time. I want to be able to say one day they can look back and say hallelujah during our first revival this is what happened what about you what is the legacy he said content for the faith that was handed down from our fathers that is now with us stop sleeping too much tell to somebody shake them up say stop sleeping too much now tell to somebody say stop eating too much Come on, somebody say, get off of Facebook and put your face back in the book. Put your hands together. Oh, come on, put your hands together. Come on, come on, it's time to contend. Come on, it's time to contend. Come on, it's time to move forward. Come on, it's time to get something. Come on, it's time to get a hold of God for our generation. My time is going, but let me keep going. Are you here with me? So Joshua is saying the same thing. He said there are seven demons that you got to fight, that you got to defeat in your journey to your promise. Somebody say seven. seven. Two weeks ago we dealt with one. What was the name of that one? The Hittite. What did we say the Hittite was? Terror, fear. That was their name. And today they are still existing. Now, as a, as a pastor, let me, be, uh, let me go ahead and clear something out here. If you listen to the tape, I went back, you know, and I, and I felt, you know, even though they are, they, they are cousins, I, I did make a mistake, and I, I need to uh, make clear. At the end, towards the end of the service, I I I, I should have used Amalekite, and I did Hittite. All right. Some of the statements that I made in terms of uh, Saul, how to defeat, you know, kill Agar, that was the Amalekites, but they are cousins, so they are still, you know, operating the same way. But you know, um, with full disclosure. You know, when we give something and we realize that we gave the wrong reference, I hope you are you are, you are glad about that. You know, just to clear that. Okay, so that was America, but the Hittites operate with the same emo, the modus operandi. Amen. You know, they are the they are the present descendants of these terrorists that you are dealing with. Their operation is through what fear. 
and fear paralyzes you. Fear stops you in your tracks. Fear, fear, uh, what? False evidence appearing real. Hallelujah. They are the instigators of discouragement. They are the instigators. Hallelujah. That, that, that hold you back from not pursuing what God wants you to pursue. Fear of failure. Fear of the unknown. Fear of man. Bible said the fear of man is a snare. Somebody say, I fear no man. I fear only God. Today, I want to talk to you briefly about the Kekeshat. Someone say Kekeshat. Hallelujah. I don't know how if we can finish even with the Kekeshat today because it's a lot. Somebody say Kekeshat. The word Kekeshat actually is gotten from, it was stated that there were people that lived in clay houses and they were also, you know, the meaning of it was that there were people who always retreated from pilgrimage. Hear me carefully. I'm about to talk to somebody here today. The spirit called Gegeshite is a spirit that is always causing you to retreat when you should be advancing and progressing. The spirit called Gegeshite is a spirit that causes people to backslide. Because they are on their way to a pilgrimage on a journey of faith. Even according to Psalm 84, Bible says that those that go through the valley of Baca, hallelujah, even though it is a place of bitterness, they are able to turn it into a spring of pool, and each one will make the pilgrimage. He said, how amiable are your courts? Hallelujah. When you know that you are on a pilgrimage, how many of you know we are on a pilgrimage? How many of you know we are on the way to heaven? But on that journey, there's going to be some different things happening. And the spirit that God gave us is a spirit that is always pulling you back when you ought to be going forward. In a spirit that is causing you to backslide. Somebody say, oh, oh I have never backslid. But can I ask you a question? See, many of us, when we talk about backsliding, we are talking. We are thinking of that person that maybe hallelujah used to come to church and uh, now they've stopped coming to church. Now they are, you know, sleeping around, blood messing around and all that stuff. You know, yeah, that you know, that, that is your typical backsliding force. But can I tell you something? There are more backsliding people in the church today that are, are, are living a righteous life out there. What am I talking about? What is a backsliding stage? Pastor Every, please come to me. Hallelujah. Please come to me for a second. Let me just give you a picture. And so you judge yourself, there's no condemnation. Somebody say there's no condemnation. Because today we are going to defeat the spirit get a shot. Yeah. Are you here with me? Yeah. When I got saved, I became home to Jesus, right? Ah, I love Jesus. Everywhere he goes, I want to go. Hallelujah. Now, Pastor Edwin, now for this sake, uh, you are Jesus, okay? Uh, you, you love being Jesus? Okay. You are Jesus. Oh, you want me to be Jesus? You be Jesus? Okay, all right. So, so I'm Alfred. You are Jesus. I got say I'm so happy. I'm working with Jesus. I'm in on in tandem with Jesus. Now Jesus is here. Let's start going for it. You know, let's start going. And then, Hallelujah! I'm still praising God. I'm still in church. Okay, now Jesus, please stop. <laughs> now let me ask you a question. Am I still with Jesus? No. I am where I, I was before. So, yeah, I, I've not gone back. No. But am I still with Jesus? No. I have backslid. I'm behind you. I am not moving with you. So, there are many people in church. Praising the Lord always. Where's your phone? Checking what's up on the church. Praising the Lord. Hey, how are you doing? Going to check for different reasons. Now I'm going to check to find me a husband. I'm going to check to find me a wife. Oh, I'm saved. Don't con don't condemn me now. I'm watching some things maybe actually. But I'm still praising God. I'm still in church. I am smoking. I am drinking. I am shocking. I ain't doing nothing. Hallelujah. But Jesus is over there. Yeah. I'm looking back. Sign, who are you? Oh Jesus, hold on, I'm still in church. <laughs> who am I talking to today? You have been in church 20 years, but you have not moved an inch. What have you done with what you call sin? Folks, I'm going to tell you in a brief moment, there's, there's a spiritual aspect of the Gegeshite. See, see, it was not intentional. Some of us, our backsliding is not intentional. It just happened along the course. You just forget yourself. 
you just take a little break from Jesus. Folks, you don't take vacation from Jesus. He is your life. Oh God. I go to vacation with Jesus. That's my wife. Hallelujah. When I go to vacation, I go for, I go for, I go for vacation from you all, not from Jesus. Are you listening to me? Sometimes I have more fellowship with him on vacation. Now, you, you hear what I'm saying? Listen to me. This is, this is, that, that's the Gekeshite spirit. It's a distracted spirit. It, you know, it is somebody who's going to come your way. You got to be careful that fellowship you begin to have even in church. Can I tell you something honest to God? If you are in a relationship, whether it is, uh, you know, if it's a marriage, well, we have to pray because, you know, that is holy, you have to say that. But if you are in any form of relationship and anybody you are in relationship with them, and they are not adding to your life, then they are subtracting from your life. If you are sitting in a pew and somebody is distracting your focus, from Jesus, that that person is a the shy spirit. They are pulling you back from that way that you got to go. If you are in any form of environment that is making you less, hallelujah, being able to pray. If you are in any condition that is making you less, hallelujah, of what you need to do for God, you are dealing with the shy because that get a shy spirit is putting a weightiness on you to stop walking with God. I'm not even dealing with the person who has actually walked away and doing stuff. I'm dealing with the person who thinks that they are standing up and don't realize that they are already falling up, even from the faith because they are no more praying. Yeah, you are coming to church with your Bible up, tap underneath your armpit but once you go home, when again do you open that book? When again do you go before God? Some of us have been praying for more than five minutes all this week until we came to church. Don't tell me you ain't backsliding. You have not been communicating with your God. Don't tell me you are not backsliding. Oh, when you got saved, how long will you spend the time with Jesus? Unless you were not saved, like I was saying, I'm not preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. I may be backsliding, I don't know. Where is the condition of my heart? Where is the, where is the desire for more of God? If you are desired, less of God today uh, than you were two weeks ago. Uh, can I tell you something? Uh, get a shite. Uh, it's on your tail. Uh, if you are wanting less of God, uh, hallelujah, today than you wanted him about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, can I tell you something? Uh, you are in trouble or uh, backsliding. Uh, am I telling you you are going to hell? No. Uh, but I'm telling you uh, you are far away from God. Uh, and any distance you have between you and God uh, is an opportunity missed uh, of what God can do for you and what you can do for God. Is somebody here with me? I am not hearing no amen, but I know I'm preaching the word anyhow because I came to help you. And it's time for us to get back. Hallelujah to the beginning. It is time to return to our first love. Can I tell you, it says in Revelation, Jesus spoke to the church. And he talked to the church called Ephesians. The Ephesian church, they started with power. They started with glory. Jesus commanded them. He says, oh God. He says, I know your works. I know your labor. You are doing stuff for me. You are going places. Can I tell you, you can be doing ministry and still be backsliding. You can be doing ministry as a job. I don't want to be a professional pastor. Angie, I don't want to be a professional preacher. I don't want to do this because I have to do it. I want to do it because I need to do it. Because Jesus, I can't help myself. Because the love of God constrains me. I am not trying to build my own empire. Because some people are preaching this gospel. Because they can't sell insurance. Because they can't do anything else. They are trying to get the American way through the gospel. The devil is a liar. I want Jesus. Give me Jesus and take the world. I want to be close to him. I want to be where he is. He said in John chapter 17, I want you to be where I am. That you may see my glory. If you want to see the glory of God, like you say you want to, then you are going to come close to him. The glory of God is where Jesus is. You got to be close to him. Somebody said yes. You gotta be close to Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to, 
But you gotta be acceptable. You gotta be honest with yourself and say, I have lost my first love. Jesus said to the Ephesian church, He said, You have been doing works, you have been winning souls, you have been preaching the gospel. I know your labor, I commend you. But He said, I have one thing against you. One thing. And anything Jesus says I have against you, I want to fix it. Because I don't want nothing that He can say, I have something against you. Of me. You can build a mansion, you can build a mega church, but if Jesus says, I have one thing against you, may the Lord help me to be able to give up that mega church. Some people are willing to sacrifice their marriage so they can keep their name and reputation. Hallelujah in the church. If anything should happen, I pray that you pray for me. I will be willing to give this up to get it right with this woman and to get it right with my Jesus. Listen to me. I, 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 I am not going to hell for you all. I'm not going to hell for nobody. I am not retreating from the gospel, from my Lord and Savior, for nobody. So God help me. He said, you have left your first love. I have one thing, only one. But that was huge. Because he said, unless you repent. Oh, that's a word we don't want to hear. I, I, I'm sorry, I got to say it. Uh, I, I got to use that word because it's a good word. It is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. He said, you, unless you repent, I am about to take your lampstand away from you. You mean to tell me, Jesus, after all I've been doing for you, do you know that God never asked you to do anything for him? Yes. What can you do for God? You, human being, you think God is going to trust you to do something for him? Oh, it is his grace. He doesn't want you to do something for him. He wants to do something through you. Yes. He wants to do something with you yes. and through you. Yes. But how can God do something through you and with you when he is there and you are here? Your personal devotion life is more important to God than anything else in your life. Oh, come on, somebody. If you are, if you are getting convicted, just say out and say, God, I repent. Because we're going to say that's okay, I'm returning to the heart of worship. That was a good setup. Are you here with me, somebody? I'm talking to somebody. It's time for us to get back to our first love. What is our first love? Because Jesus said, I want you to go back and begin to do the former works. You know, what, what was the former works? Folks, folks, I mean, if you were, if, if you got saved, unless of course your salvation experience was not, you know, real. You know, some of us, we slip into the kingdom so we think we can slide in and out. Oh, but if you had an encounter with Jesus, if you have ever tasted of his love, if you have ever tasted of his beauty, if you have ever tasted of his presence, if you have ever known the presence of God, then you know what I know, that it is sweeter than anything else. If you have ever tasted, I have tasted of the presence of God, and sometimes I just want to get back there. I remember that one day, I have been trying to run away. Hallelujah, glory to God from being a Catholic priest. And one of the reasons why I had that, I said, Lord, if I'm going to be a Catholic priest, I'm, going to, I, I, please, I'm not going to get married, but I know I love me some woman. See, I want to I do it right. See, and so from that time onwards, God saved me. From that time onwards, you know, I was, oh, I was giddy. It's almost like, you know, any, any, any lady that will, you know, give me a little eye, I'll be like, is that a one? Is that a one? See, I was, I was beginning to be on fire. I was looking for my wife, you know, any little sign. I'm like, is that a one? See, because I wanted to get married for the wrong reasons. And so one day in worship, I don't know how long it was. I don't know whether it was seconds or minutes, but I was caught up in ecstasy, in the presence. And in that one moment, it seemed like God took away the desire even of marriage because his presence was so precious. It seems like in the communication of that moment, it was like, Alfred, I am more precious than any marriage experience you can ever have. And in that moment, in honest truth, I gave up the, the, the issue of marriage. I said, God, if I can have this, I don't need to get married. I will not marry this. See, 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 that was my Isaac. And I sacrificed in that moment. And in that same moment, God said, Alfred, the issue is not me wanting you to get married. The issue is why you want to get married. Yes. In fact, I want you to get married. 
Because in your marriage, I'm going to prove myself to you. In your marriage, you are going to prove by your love for your wife, you are going to show that you love me. Because how can you say that you love me that you don't see and don't love the one that you are sleeping on the same bed with? I'm talking to some married people. This thing called Christianity, we got to walk it out. What am I saying in that moment? But I didn't want it to end. I said, Lord, I will give up anything and everything for you to have this experience. Folks, I want that every day. I want to live in this presence every day. For in this presence is fullness of joy. I don't know about you, whether you are finding fulfillment outside of the presence of God. And you are not getting no amens, but I know God is speaking to somebody. It's time to get up and back into the presence of God. Get back to who you truly are. He loves you more than anything else. But do you love him like he loves you? Do you love him? Are you willing to do the former works? Some of us when we got saved. Hallelujah. There's not a prayer meeting that we call that you will not be there. In fact, you were there before the pastor showed up. You were concerned when they didn't open the doors. Some of you were there before the church was opened. You couldn't wait. You went to all the meetings in town. Unless you didn't hear that Benny Hill was around or whoever. You were in that meeting. I know because it happened to me. I would chase and go into the presence of God when Pastor Eastwood and Abba was preaching anywhere in Ghana. In fact, one day, hallelujah, friends, maybe you will, you will appreciate this in Ghana. I have to board a, 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 a trotro. Trotro is like a bus, but it is a fight, you know, the, the, the survival of the fittest. <laughs> you have money for taxi. You know, taxi, you can just wait down, you sit inside, everything. But this trotro, there's about 100 people trying to fit into a, 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 a bus that can take only 20 people. You can imagine what I'm talking about. Once that church all passed there, Christians have, I'm telling you, I was at that station waiting to go to Legon to attend a meeting just to be in the presence of God. I was in one of my nine shirts, and in the struggle, my shirt got torn. I had a decision to make. Am I going to go back home to change, or am I going to go? I went to the meeting in my torn shirt. Yes. Because what I was going to experience was more precious to me than a shirt. Oh God. Today, if you don't have a suit on, you say you can go to church. If you don't have something to wear, you say I don't have something to wear. You will sit at home because something is wrong. Am I talking to somebody in this house? Come on, it's time to get back. Oh Lord, have mercy. I am here to kill that Gegeshai spirit from you. I'm here to burn every Gegeshai spirit that is hindering your progress in God. Some of you, you take two steps in God and then you push you back one step. I don't know. I know I'm talking to somebody. At the end of this service, I know somebody's going to come and tell me, Pastor, you are talking to me. Some of you, how many of you have been struggling to make head with it, even in your Christian walk? Hallelujah. Sometimes you think, oh, I finally made it. And then Sunday comes and pulls you back. Oh, I came to tell you today, there is liberty in the presence. Because Jesus will not allow that Gegeshai guy spirit to prevent you from entering into your promised land. No Gegeshai guy spirit will hinder your progress anymore. Come on, somebody shout it. I am going forwards and upwards. Jesus before me. Jesus is for me. I am going to get back to Jesus. I came to challenge somebody here this morning. If you are backslid, I'm not talking about you are doing things out there. If you are doing it, pray the Lord break you out of it. I'm talking to somebody. You may come into church every Sunday. You may come to church on Wednesdays. But in your heart of hearts, you know that you are not where you know you need to be. Your prayer life is not where it's supposed to be. Your devotional life is not where it's supposed to be. Everything about you, hallelujah, is not what it used to be. And you want to get back into the presence of God. You want to get back in tune with God. I want you to stand on your feet right now. Hallelujah. I'm not going to go forward. There is another level of it. Maybe we will deal with it next Sunday. But I just want to stop over here. And I want to pray for some people. 
because it is time to rededicate your life back to Jesus. It is time to get back your first love, your first love. Hallelujah. It is time to get back to the spirit of worship. It is time to set your house on fire for God. Are you ready for me? Are somebody here ready? Are you here for revival? Are you ready to be revived? Are you ready to break out of the Gegeshai spirit? Are you ready to go on for Jesus? Are you ready? Oh, come on, somebody say, I am ready. Come on, somebody say, I am ready. I love Jesus. Come on, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I just feel I need to just pause and stop. Hallelujah. There is a natural aspect of this, but this is very important. There is nothing more important than your spiritual walk with God. I get to break that Gegeshai spirit. I get to destroy. I get to expose that Gegeshai spirit. I declare that a year by this time, you will not recognize yourself. You will be on fire for God. Nothing will be more satisfying than the presence of God. My Lord, we can do get it back to the heart of worship, or your presence is like heaven to me. People of God, I need a people that will push me on. I need somebody that will pray for me as I pray for you. I want somebody that will refuse to be refused. There is more in Jesus than there is out there in the world. The Gengeshai spirit, the glory to God, they live in clear houses. What does that that mean uh, they are canal, uh, they like canal things, uh, they like earthly things, uh, they are more earthly minded uh, than heavenly minded. Uh, the Gengesites, uh, they always retreat, uh, hallelujah, from a pilgrimage. Uh, there are people of God, uh, people of God, uh, going back to things uh, that they are giving up, uh, they are giving up that booze, uh, they are giving up that whatever. Uh, but today, uh, we are compromising little by little, uh, we are going back little by Little. We are watching things that we didn't used to watch. We are going places we didn't used to go. We are doing things we didn't used to do. But today, it is not about legalism. It is about a righteousness that is by faith in Christ Jesus. It is about a relationship with the living God. It is about a fellowship. You will never lose your relationship. But have you lost your fellowship? Have you lost your communion? Have you lost your devotion? Have you lost uh, Cabra, Deleve, Cabra, your first love? If that is you, uh, lift up your hands uh, and come on, somebody begin to pray. Uh, for the next five minutes, uh, I want you to get back your fellowship. Uh, I want you to get back your relationship. Uh, I want you to cry out to God uh, and say, Father, deliver me uh, from the Kekashai spirit, uh, from the backsliding spirit. Uh, I want more of you. Uh, I want more of you. Uh, I want more of God. Uh, I want more of Jesus. Oh, Shaba. Libra Katara Babo Come on, you gotta be honest with yourself. You gotta be honest with yourself. Today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of liberation. Oh, come on, somebody be honest with yourself. Oh, come on, be honest with yourself. Are you where God has wanted you to be? God has come to the garden today. He is crying out, Alfred, where are you? Hallelujah, Alfred, where are you? He is calling out your name. He is saying, where are you? You are not where you used to be. You are not in my face. You are not seeking my face. You are not in my presence long enough. There is more I want to do in you. There is more I want to bring to you. I have more for you. But I need you to be where I need you to be. I want God. I want God. Oh, come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost drawing you. If you want to come to the altar, feel free to come to the altar. If you want to use your seat as an altar, come on, I break it off of you. I break it off of you. I demand the devil to let you go. I demand that if you want to go to the altar and lay your life down and say, I'm coming back, Jesus. I am returning to you, Jesus. 
refuse to go back. I refuse to go back. I want your love more than ever before. For your love is better than wine. Your love is better than wine. I need somebody to make an altar in the altar place of where you are and begin to seek God afresh. Begin to cry out to him afresh. Begin to cry out for him. Begin to hunger for him. Begin to pray for him. Say, God, I am returning to my first love. Oh, Shabarabakasa Tarabados. Yando de Katasa Tarabakosheve. Oh my Jesus. What is more important than you than God? What is more important than you than the presence of God? Oh, come on, cry out to Him. Come on, say, Lord. Oh, my Father, you're not a promotion. Oh, set a fire within me. Revive me today, God. Revive my passion for you, God. Revive my love for you, God. Oh, my God. Burn every child. Burn every child. I submit myself to you. I present my mind, my body, my soul. I present my body as a living sacrifice. I declare my body is the temple of the Lord. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Lord. My Father, my God. I break every gift of my spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Gegeshai has to go. To free you from being spiritual in mind. You've got to let some things go. Let some bitterness go. Unforgiveness. Strive. Pride. Let nothing hold you back from pursuing a loving relationship with your Savior. Any form of addiction, pornography, drunkenness, smoking, drugs, whatever it may be, there is now no condemnation, but you got to be free. I want you to come to the front, let's pray together. You want to give it up, but sometimes it is tough. Well, let's pray together. The Bible says, if two of us shall agree as touching anything, on earth it shall be done by our Father in heaven. Come on, I'm waiting on somebody come to the front. We have cleared more space, so now we can do more. So just come to me. Come to me. Hallelujah. If as we are praying, you sense that maybe the service is going beyond the game. We don't try to keep you there longer than you should. I wish that you would just hold on for a few minutes. If you are not coming to the front, help by praying for those who are coming. Pray for yourself. But if you absolutely have to leave, I understand, I love you and I release you. But go and fulfill destiny. Go and be in the face of your father.